Welcome to Fred Achando Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. If you check Twitter today, the former president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta is actually trending at number one. And this is because of late, the son of Jomo has endured a lot of character assassination from the man they worked with for a period 10 years as his deputy president. William Samoy Ruto. William of late has made claims that Uhuru Kenyatta is a murderer. He wanted to kill Wafula Chibukati. He has said that not only that, President Uhuru Kenyatta in cahoot of some policemen used to torture people in some container because that container he claims is full of blood and he used to kill them and then throw them to Rivayala. From where you sit, ladies and gentlemen, how do you think the former president feels? Remember, Uhuru Kenyatta is a former president of this nation, having ruled for 12, 10 years. He is a father and he is also a grandfather. After his retirement, he was given some more roles beyond the borders. You've seen him busy trying to make peace and tranquility in Congo and so he is a man who is being looked at both locally and beyond the borders. But as all this is happening, as he is trying to uh, bring peace between the government of Congo and the rebels, back at home he is facing serious allegations as a man who was perpetuating the very things he's trying to condemn in Congo. How would you react if you were Uhuru Kenyatta? Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to delve so much into this and as we do this, if you are watching our channel for the first time, kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our videos. Do you think William Ruto, in his wildest, wildest imagination, thought that after making these serious allegations against Uhuru Kenyatta, he was going to sit back and just watch as his image is being dented. I believe Uhuru Kenyatta is a very angry man. He is mad. Behind that very happy facade, as he's trying to look like a man who is taking a low profile, Uhuru is a disturbed man. And this is the reason why he sent Jeremiah Kioni with a coded message in an envelope to go and tell off William Ruto. In that video that is going viral, Jeremiah Kioni is making claims that in the just concluded hotly contested elections, Raila Dinga, who was the Azimio presidential candidate, won with a massive 8 million votes representing 57% and then William Ruto came a distant second with 5 million and I believe that this is Uhuru's voice telling William Ruto to stop this character assassination because when the elections were going on Uhuru Kenyatta was still the president he had the sword and he was the commander-in-chief of the armed forces he was enjoying the pieces of intelligence so it is like he's telling William Ruto that I know you sit there as the president but you stole the votes Uhuru is also passing some message to Raila supporters especially those in Nyanza to counter certain allegations that were made by the deputy president Rigadi Geshagwa that those who were surrounding Rai Ludinga are con men because recently while in that, Nyan that Nyanza tour Rigadi Geshagwa said that those from Mount Kenya who are surrounding Rai Ludinga cheated Raila that they would work hard to deliver Mount Kenya votes yet they knew very well it was a mountain to climb it was not going to be easy but Uhuru Kenyatta is coming out through Jeremiah Kioni 
to counter these allegations by telling them that look here, we won. People of Mount Kenya voted for you, but the massive irregularities took place in Bomas. Jeremiah Kuni said that there were about 144 constituencies that were at the height of anomalies. And he says that most of these constituencies were from central Kenya. Jeremiah Kion himself believes that he was voted out by rigging. And so Uhuru is telling the Nyanza people that we worked hard, we delivered, but your votes were stolen. Uhuru is cleansing his name because by making those serious allegations, William Ruto wanted to sanitize Chebukati and to legitimize his presidency. But Uhuru Kenyatta is also coming out because these allegations can create a rift between himself and Chebukati supporters, maybe those Western Kenya electorates. And Uhuru is telling them that there wasn't such a thing that happened. It is William Ruto who used Chebukati to rig votes. Because both Chebukati and Uhuru Kenyatta are now retired. And they, they have retired from uh, public offices and they want to be free to work freely and mingle with people. They do not want to carry any burden on their shoulder. As Chebukati claims that he wanted to be killed, Uhuru Kenyatta is cleansing himself and saying I, there was no such plans. And Uhuru Kenyatta is pointing a finger to Chebukati. And it is like he's telling him, come clean, do not look for excuses. The Azimio through Uhuru Kenyatta and Jeremiah Kioni is also reminding their supporters of their massive numbers by coming out to say that they won by 8 million votes against Ruto's 5 million. They are telling the Azimio supporters, Aluta continua, the struggle continues. Because the truth is, many are beginning to get tired they are psychologically tortured but they are being told rise up because 2027 is nearing let us keep this government in check because we have the numbers if William Ruto thought that by bringing those statements and uh, making such serious allegations he would give Kenyans something to talk about because the truth is Kenyans had forgotten about now the cost of living and they wanted to sympathize with uh, Wafula Chebukati, especially those who support Uhuru Kenyatta. I mean, those who support William Ruto. The Azimio have also come with, an, they have opened another chapter to give their supporters to read because now as the, uh, as the Kenya Kwanzaa supporters read the chapter with the headline, the murder of Wafula Chibukati. Those who are supporting Azimio also have another chapter with the headline, 8 million against 5 million. So this is, these are counter allegations just to ensure that the Azimio supporters also have something to talk about. They are being reminded of their victory. These politicians are very funny. One side is reminding their, their supporters that when we won, someone wanted to kill Chebukati to rob us our victory. Another one is also telling that their supporters that we won, but this same Chebukati stole our vote. So, the Azimio supporters are being given something. And even if you walk around, you will see that backlines have been drawn. And it is working against William Ruto. Because William Ruto inherited a divided country. The fact that people did not go to the street does not mean that there is peace. But instead of working hard to unite people by the way he was going to Nyanza and he was received, he is coming back to erase all the gains that he has made. How I wish that you would have taken that, that, that reconciliatory path to ensure that everyone is united. But it seems that while trying to sanitize Chebukati as Chebukati goes home, he's also digging another, another grave. It is going to work against him. And so Uhuru Kenyatta, from where he sits, 
has sent a coded uh, message to William Ruto and is, is telling him, I'm mad with these allegations. I'm tired of these character assassinations. Again, I would, I would want to remind the nation that Uhuru Kenyatta is a former president. He is a father. He is a grandfather. He is the one who is leading the peacekeeping in Congo. He is now an international leader. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot clear your conscience by trying to blame others, by trying to lie. This conscience will walk with you wherever you go. I remember the former ECK chairman, Samuel Kivuitu, came up later when he was asked whether he, he, he still believed that Kibaki won the 207 elections. And he said, I don't know. I don't know who won. I don't know whether the same shame-faced Wafula Chibukati will one day come and say that he doesn't know who won. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't you think there must be some respect between William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta? Because both of them are leaders. One is a former president, one is a president. And William Ruto should understand that one day he will be a former president and the same way he's treating his predecessors is the same way he shall be treated. That is my take, ladies and gentlemen.